Did I scare you? Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rift News, the show you are most likely going to watch to check if I'm actually a cat. Good news, I am not actually a cat. But if you're watching this on release, um, I might be a cat on Twitch right now. Anyway, because I spent two years working on the last video, uh, there is a lot of news which we didn't talk about. So now, let's have a look at all the news surrounding Riot Games which we have not talked about. As always, starting with League. In League, World's Finals are happening now. Well, by the time this video released, the finals already happened. I think it's safe to cover spoilers because who wanted to watch the finals already did. So let's just say, what an anime storyline. What's interesting is that we already know what champions will get their skins. Those will be Aatrox, for obvious reasons, also Kindred, Akali, Caitlyn, also for obvious reasons, and Ash. Ash is a sad one because, you know, that's supposed to be the support, and everyone would love to see Bard. However, we should mention that Ash is not locked down yet. Beryl is still deciding, but Ash is most likely to happen. And lastly, there is also Maokai. But besides the worlds, Riot also released a lot of new skins. Um, there is so many of them that this time we will go through them very quickly. And I really mean very quickly. What am I talking about? We all know it's not gonna be fast. First of all, Kasante released on live servers. We have not covered his lore on the channel yet. That's coming soon. In-game people tried playing him as a support, but so far he is dominating top lane. Because we are talking about quite a unique champion, he also got a release prestige skin. The prestige Empyrean Kasante is a skin approved by Lil Nas X. And I have to say, it's a really good skin. It fits the thematic and it is totally different from his launch skin and the base model. So overall, I'm just happy that prestige skins feel like standalone skins and not chroma versions anymore. Anyway, he was released with the Empyrean skin line, which turned out to be a music skin line. And so, be ready for a lot of cool sound effects. I mean, the entire skin line got its own music video, which is definitely worthy of a world song of its own. The Empyrean skins are hit or miss for most people. But I have to say, despite them seemingly looking quite simple, they are also very unique. And the spell effects and sound effects are what makes them great. Jax, who appeared in the music video, has some really cool effects floating around his base model. Also, the spells are quite flashy. Jin looks always good, no matter what you slap on top of him, so this is no exception. The spell effects are great and the song plays during his ultimate. Lux? You know, it's a Lux skin, Riot has to pay their bills somehow. But since this skin line is all about spell effects and Lux is nothing but spells, it works quite well for her. Vex looks badass, I honestly love this one. The flame effects fit her so well. Same goes for Zack. He really looks like an alien dark monstrosity. It's an amazing fit for such a simple character. And then there is Zed, which is kinda just Zed. To be fair, the colorful effects are quite cool and um, the tiny flames, which are really, really tiny, are great as well. But since Zed is already a dark character and this is a dark skin, it doesn't really make him look unique. But then, Pike, of course, being a legendary, steals the show. His animations here are over-exaggerated animations of the base model, which isn't too awesome. But yet again, the spell effects are extremely flashy. And I mean extremely flashy. You could say it's a bit too much, but it's not because Riot did something clever. Despite it looking like this is disrupting the game, only you can see these spell effects. To everyone else, the explosions are a bit smaller to keep the competitive side still competitive. This is a great workaround to give legendary skins truly legendary spell effects. I don't think Riot has done something like this before, so the tech behind this could improve what's coming. Also, when Pike gets a pentakill, he causes an explosion that covers most of the map. This is something Riot has never done before and I hope to see more of this. 
What also improves the quality of this skin line are the chroma skins. Since the base skins are just a dark model with some colors to them, keeping the same style of the color palette you really feel like you are customizing the skins. Now all of these skins literally just dropped onto live servers. Which means that PBE already has even more skins. Space Groove is returning with skins such as Gragas, who looks amazing. The model is amazing, the spell effects are goopy, it's great. Lissandra looks like a character from the old Daft Punk movie. And I love this, especially because the spell effects are gorgeous. Surprisingly, the same goes for Nami. The spells are great, but at this point Nami could really use some physics on her tail. If anything, her animations are really dragging her down. She also got a prestige skin with a different staff, different clothing and champagne pink spells. But she has a jellyfish in the staff, so I'm fine with this. There is also Tarig, who fits this skin line really well. The goopy animals replacing the crystals really give him some flair. And then there is Orn, whom a lot of people don't seem to like. Unfortunately, especially Orn mains don't like it. Even though, I kinda do. I just wish the torso had a bit more detail, because right now it feels flat. But I like the goofy glasses and the horns. Below the beard though, the skin is kinda fine. But the goopy ram is quite cool. Then there is Twisted Fade who looks cool, but um, I don't understand why they took away his hat. The hat is an essential part of his silhouette. Don't ever try to pull out that card again. Anyway, it's a pretty cool skin too. And lastly, there is the legendary Teemo, whom... Uh, for a moment I thought that was Fizz. There is nothing that tells you this is Teemo. He doesn't have a backpack, there is no hat, he doesn't have a dart gun. Like really, you're fine with this silhouette, but wearing a hat is wrong? Anyway, at the end of this we can also mention that the new skin for Grinding Ranked will be Victorious Sejuani, who is simply inspired by what if Sejuani won the War of the War Mothers. What really matters though is that this is a really cool skin. But that's all the news when it comes to League. Besides Worlds, we're just getting a lot of skins. And I mean, like, we are getting skins in League and nothing else. And if you don't believe me, let's have a look at the other games, such as TFT. TFT now has its own YouTube channel. I know that usually you wouldn't think this is important, but I can't believe up until now it was all on the League of Legends YouTube channel. Anyway, there they posted a dev update, so we learned what's coming next. The next set will be Teamfight Tactics Monsters Attack. It's a set based around heroes and kaijus. At the beginning they show a strange looking Cho'Gath. They don't mention it, they just show it. It's one that looks very much updated. Of course when I saw this I realized I have seen this somewhere before. Of course I have seen it before because this was a fan concept of a potential Cho'Gath VGU by Taylor Jensen, who now works at Riot. And who unfortunately confirmed that as far as he knows, there are no plans to use that in any Riot products. So Riot just trolled us with a non-existing VGU. With that said, TFT does have its own unique models. So who knows, maybe this is an updated Rift Herald. Anyway, at the beginning of the video they confirmed that augments are now a permanent part of TFT, which is a surprise to exactly nobody. After putting them in the game, there was no way they could ever go back. Even though, as Mort said, at first they didn't think Augments would be a permanent addition. It was supposed to be just a gimmicky mechanic for that set. But yes, now we know that the mechanic is staying permanently. We then learned that the next set will swap out a portion of the Augments, but to make the Augments feel unique to the set they are also introducing a new kind of Augment, a Hero Augment. These augments focus on buffing a single unit and turning them into a superhero or a supervillain. For example, in this set, Alistar has a single target knockup, but with the hero augment, you can turn it into an AoE knockup. However, remember that every unit in this set will have two different hero augments. 
so for Alistar, the alternative is to make his ability scale with health. When the hero augment appears in selection, it appears for all players at the same time. And you always get to choose from three of them. When it comes to gameplay, it was confirmed that we are not getting colossi or dragons or anything like that. There will be no units taking up two spots in your army. That's to enforce the feeling of building an army of superheroes. It was also confirmed that Ramus will be in TFT. This is not a drill, I repeat, this is not a drill. And he will be a threat. Threats are a new kind of units that work on their own. Kinda like some legendaries, but threats don't have any traits and they don't benefit from each other. So you can really put them into any comp you want. When it comes to specific new traits, it was revealed that there will be Anima Squad. These units buff each other whenever they get their first takedown. Underground units, which are essentially Psyops, get stacks of heist. They get one for a victory and two for a loss. At every seven stacks, they get a chance to cash out or they can wait for the next seven stacks and get even better rewards. So this is basically the new losing streak fortune trait. There is also the Ox Force, which is led by Aphelios who has a unique trait that allows you to customize which weapon he's going to use in the fight. And speaking of customization, there is also the admin trait, which lets you customize an entire trait. And let me tell you, this might be the most interesting trait in the entire history of TFT. Just like when you are programming, you choose the cause and effect. For example, you can choose that something happens on every cast, or it happens every few seconds and then you choose what is going to happen. For example, you gain mana or you gain a damage buff. Star Guardians also return, but this time they don't give mana to each other. They just generate more mana for themselves the higher you go in the trade. But that's really it for gameplay, so now on to cosmetics. Just like every set, this time we are also getting a really fancy arena. And it is the Star Guardian arena which comes with the Star Guardian music, which thankfully is safe for creators. Otherwise, streaming would be very awkward. And it also has a really cool Star Guardian intro ceremony. But of course, it is a mythic arena, so we all know what it means. It was then revealed that we are also getting Star Guardian Baron, which also comes with the normal version of Baron. Now, of course, because TFT saw some really good numbers after introducing more chibi champions, we are getting more chibi champions. And this time for the Star Guardian Arena, we are getting Lux and Ari with their Star Guardian skins. And yes, of course, they both also have an execute. On top of this, there are also two new standard little legends. There is Grizzle, the koala bear, and Whiskers, a really creepy cat. Whom I love. I swear I'm not a furry. But it's been a while since I have bought some eggs. But then they started talking about events. After pulling off something like the sky glass, they realized that events gave TFT some nice flair. But they mentioned that they are dedicated to do something better. And in early 2023, they will reveal a brand new game mode. And apparently it is going to innovate on what events can offer. You hear that league? They have game modes. But things get crazier because then Mordog revealed the roadmap. This revealed that in winter we are getting the next set. Early 23 will give us the event with the game mode. This will likely be related to Lunar Revel. The mid set in spring looks suspiciously voidy. I wonder if it is related to the Darkin release in League and Legends of Runeterra. Then in summer we're going to see the next set after that, which seems to be based on canon Runeterra, with the TFT anniversary dropping after that, with a mid set in fall and a music themed set at the end of the year. So what I got from this is that I am looking forward to seeing Demacians and Noxians fight it out. But come on TFT, I know you have custom models, I challenge you to pull off Cythria. But that's related for TFT, so now let's have a look at Wild Rift. Wild Rift has been on steroids this week. We got the Supreme Cell cinematic, 
But we also got Warwick's trailer cinematic, which is a prequel to his original VGU cinematic. But we also got a preview for patch 3.5. This patch will release Aatrox in Wild Rift, who really has a gorgeous HD model, and who works exactly the same as he does in League. Then we are also getting Kane. Again, the HD model is amazing, but I've seen some people who pointed out that it looks a bit off. Personally, I didn't notice anything, but I did see the shadowy tattoo that he normally doesn't have. Also, he is the same as he is in League. The only difference being that you choose your form in the mountain by stepping into the form. Lastly, I could mention that in the client you can actually view the HD models of both the Shadow Assassin and Rast. And later, after the Darkin, Lilia will also come to Wild Rift. And she looks absolutely gorgeous. I swear I'm not a furry. And even she is the exact same as she is in League. When it comes to gameplay, similar to what's been happening in League, they are trying to make jungling easier. So, for example now, after killing a jungle camp, you can share your buff with one laner. Because this is doubling the amount of buffs in the game, they are removing the upgraded buffs. There is also a new jungler buff called Conservation. You get stacks of it by spending time in jungle doing jungling stuff. But you can then cash out the stacks by killing an epic jungle monster. After cashing out, there will be a cooldown on when you will be able to get stacks again. What this buff does is that it indirectly tells you when it's a good idea to keep jungling and when it's a good idea to gank a lane, since your extra gold gain will be on cooldown. I'm curious to see how this turns out, because League could use something like this. There are also some changes to Smite. Now your Smite will upgrade after using it a certain amount of times. Also it will deal a set amount of damage and it will no longer scale with level. Both of these should make the spell a bit more consistent. And lastly, they just straight up nerf jungling camps, so jungling should be easier. This is to make sure you think about how you are going to gank lanes and not how you are going to survive in the jungle. Then they revealed some items and runes which they are borrowing from League. Such as Horizon Focus, Lord Dominic's Regards and Soul Flare. But they are also borrowing some runes such as Phase Rush or Sudden Impact, which gives you damage after using a movement ability. Then they talk about game modes. They are porting over one for all. Next, all AFK penalties should be a lot more brutal. Remakes will now automatically trigger whenever possible, because whenever they were possible, people voted yes anyway. But Wild Rift is also getting an avoid list. You can put people on this list to make sure you are not matched against them or with them. Unfortunately, this list resets every week, so people have a chance to reform. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think a league has this. An amazing new feature in Wild Rift is also the skin set preview. You can now view all the skins from a set in their environment. And you can also see which ones you own. And after finishing a set, you will get a special title and an effect during picking. If anything, this shows you how far ahead Wild Rift is compared to League. Anyway, then we get to the skins. From the new pass, we are getting Super Villain Jin. I'm sorry, League players, this is a really good one. But then they revealed the Spirit Blossom event. You know, the one that we didn't get in League. Here you fill your town with the Spirit Blossom characters and you listen to them as they have conversations. <sighs> I really hope this is going to continue the storyline from the original Spirit Blossom. Having this be part of the same storyline would be amazing. But yes, this looks pretty awesome. But that's not even the end, because later we are getting the winter event called Snowball Fight. Which has its own shooting minigame! Hey Leek, can you wake up? This is getting embarrassing. Anyway, as always, they finished the video with a skin montage. Here we got Soul Hunter Kane, which gave me some Bloodborne flashbacks, Frostblade Iralia, Blood Moon Aatrox, and Chroma Crash Jinx, Echo, and Samira, which will be a legendary skin. And from Spirit Blossom there is Thresh, Lilia, Timo, Yasuo, and Yone.
with Crystal Rose Akali, Vi and Riven. But that's it for Wild Rift as well, so now let's have a look at the rest. In Legends of Runeterra nothing's really happening besides the fact that Legends of Runeterra is now the main source of lore for the universe. Or so it seems. Also they got a new competitor to care about now. Also nothing major is happening in Valorant besides the fact that they recently got a new Halloween themed skins. And lastly we can mention that Song of Nunu and Convergence were delayed to 2023. This is simply because Riot Forge thought that they can make the games better. Which tells us that Riot really does care about their own games. And quite frankly I don't mind waiting if we know that the game is gonna be good at the end. But that's it for this episode of Rift News. We had to go through a lot of skins from a lot of Riot's games. And now we are partially waiting for what is Riot going to drop this month. I mean really, November is usually a big month for Riot, be it because of Arcane or other events. So um, Riot, uh, Void event, Darkin event, I'll take anything really, it's been 5 months since we got the last piece of standalone lore. 